Hello boys and girls, welcome back to the second episode of the Summer Club Online with Cumber Baptist Church. My name is Henry, hope that you had lots of fun last week and maybe you completed the little challenge I set you as well. Well there will be uh, lots more this week, there will be another challenge, there will be another talk from God's Word as we look at the armour of God that we were thinking about last week and there's also another activity which will be uh, an art activity that you're going to be able to uh, dig yourself into as well and give, give it a go and it's just coming up in a moment's time and I really hope that you guys are able to get involved and that you're able to have lots of fun as you listen watch and obviously uh, do some of the things that we're able to share with you on this video so hope guys are keeping well it's first things up is our activity so let's get stuck in this week our activity is going to be an art activity and we are going to do a little bit of finger painting so before I get into explaining what you have to do, which is fairly self-explanatory anyway, you need a couple of things. You obviously need some paints, some acrylic paint, which you can get very, very easily. Get them in the pawn shop for a very low price. Uh, you're gonna need uh, some paper, preferably some decent paper. If you could get some sort of thick card, that would be ideal. You're gonna need some containers as well that you can put your paint on like I've done like so. And you're also gonna need some water maybe in a cup or if you're close to a sink that'll be fine as well. And maybe a tissue as well as you're gonna to have to from time to time probably clean your fingers. And finger painting is really simple. It allows you to get really creative and come up with some really cool ideas. And all you have to do is Get your finger, dab it into one of the, the dollops of paint. Don't plaster your finger with it, just dab it very simply. Just touch it on and then put it on the paper and touch it like so. And then keep pressing it until you run out of paint. Then you then you can change. You, get, you, know, you have two hands, so make sure to use all of them. But if you want to wash it, you can do that very simply. Uh, and get creative, okay? So you can maybe draw your, your favorite animal or coloring your favorite animal you can make your uh, tree or something like that there's lots and lots of different things you can do i'll give you a couple of suggestions that i have have thought about that maybe help you and um, one thing is if maybe you you want to maybe get a, an animal you can very simply print off a picture of an outline so here's an outline of, of a butterfly that would very very well fit uh, finger painting you can color that in very very simply but how about you give a go at this I thought this was really cool I seen this online it is of a hot air balloon and this is one that I made just a few moments ago that you can see is absolutely phenomenal and all you have to do is draw the outline of a hot air balloon which is very very simple and then you can choose all the colors that you want and simply you just press your finger on the hot air balloon to just fill it in you can do the the brown basket as well at, at the bottom and do the lines as well and that looks really really cool and all you have to do is wait for that to dry and that is your masterpiece complete so have lots of fun Please make sure to, to clean up afterwards. Don't get any paint on any goods and certainly not on your clothes as well. Make sure to wash your hands and hopefully you'll have lots of fun with your fingerprint, uh, finger, uh, fingerprint creations. I wonder boys and girls if you can remember seven days ago what we thought about in our first video, our first summer club online and the piece of equipment, the piece of clothing that Paul talks about, this first piece of equipment for the, the armor of God that we are to put on. Can you recall what it was? It was the, the belt of truth. I wonder if you can remember stuff that was related to that. Not so much about Big Hero 6, but about what Paul was talking about, what he was referencing with the belt of truth. Uh, we talked about the importance of, of truth and, and, and being truthful. We don't want to be people who are known not to be uh, liars or not to be um, people who would uh, tell lies, but we want to be people who are truthful and, and honest. Uh, and we see that once we look at the, the life of Jesus, who was true, always honest. Um, Paul is encouraging us, if we're to stand firm and uh, to fight, that we are to put our faith and trust in the one that was true, in, in Jesus, who was the way, the truth and the life. Very simple but really important that we get that at the very beginning. And then he moves on to the, the second piece of equipment uh, and it's a bit of a strange one whenever we hear first uh, initially. 
it's called the, the breastplate of righteousness a bit of uh, two very big words and uh, certainly if you were able to put one of those down in a game of Scrabble you would get a, a few points I'm, I'm pretty sure but it's important that we realize well, what Paul is, is talking about whenever he says breastplate uh, and righteousness and maybe they're two words you've heard of before you maybe you know what they are and what they mean maybe you don't maybe you've just heard of them before but we're going to look at them both individually in a few moments and we're going to learn about what Paul is talking about. But before we do that, it's actually really important that we realise again and be reminded about the, the type of clothing that Paul was talking about and what particular person or character this clothing suited. And that was clothing that a soldier would wear. And we might not get that with belt, but we certainly get that with breastplate. Very clear that a soldier would wear this type of, of equipment. And it's important because it reminds us, as I said last week, of that we're in a battle. It's not a physical battle, it's a spiritual battle, boys and girls. And it's against all the evil and the bad things that are going on, the darkness in our world. But God, being very good and loving, wants to care and protect for us. Uh, protect us. So that is why he has given us the, these pieces of equipment, these clothing, to, per se, to, to, to protect us, to keep us safe. And that goes to show how much he cares uh, for us and he wants us uh, to keep safe and be uh, protected. So the breastplate uh, of righteousness, okay, and this is an interesting piece of equipment, but I'm pretty sure you guys 100% do not have our own uh, breastplate, but you will be glad to know that I do. So bear with me, I'll get you my breastplate now. And this is what it looks like. Face your eyes on this. Here you go, this is a breastplate. I'm sure you could sort of of hazard a guess about what it looked like and you can see that it covers from sort of your your neck down to, to your hips and it protects you, this part of your body think of all the organs that are underneath your heart and your your long stomach etc and that's what a breastplate would do for a soldier to protect this area say they like a from a, a an arrow or a sword or even just someone um, in, in, in getting a physical body blow this was very important equipment for a soldier i'm going to set this down again it was very important for them to have a breastplate. They, a soldier simply would not have went into battle without having this on because of the amount of protection that it, it gave them. Now, albeit they usually wore a very, very heavy breastplate, it would have been some heavy load. That was a very light one, but it gave them a lot of protection. A breastplate was very, very important for a soldier. So that's a breastplate. But what about that other word that it that it's that it's described as as righteousness? Have you heard that word before? Maybe you've again heard it in church or sang a song or maybe you heard it somewhere else. Not really a word that we use often, do we? Don't really describe people as as righteous. But it's an important word to understand. It's actually kind of simple what it means. It means about, uh, it gives the idea of of someone who who lives well, someone who who does good. That they don't have, they don't make any mistakes and they don't do the, anything wrong. And it's the two things tied together. It's one thing to you know to do good, but then it's another thing not to do what is and not to do good as well. It's the two things tied together. It's always doing good and not doing wrong, and they're tied together. It's not one or the other it's it's the positive and the negative coming uh, together and and once we think of that well we think of one person hopefully we think of Jesus and once we look at Jesus life we see someone who was always doing good and not doing wrong he was someone who was always uh, being loving and caring but also refraining and not doing uh, the bad things and it was a person who would have stood up for for people who were being oppressed people who who were doing wrong things and which stood against that and we see that in his life and the incredible thing is that he did that perfectly every moment of every day of his life Jesus always lived a righteous life he was always doing good and not doing wrong and as I said last week, boys and girls, if you can remember, once we look at the, the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible, there was a, here's a fancy word again, prophecy, which is really a prediction about the, the person who was going to come to save God's people. 
and that person we know now to be is Jesus and there was a prophecy made about Jesus in the book of Isaiah that says this and it says that the saviour would put on righteousness as his breastplate the saviour would put on righteousness as his breastplate and whenever we hear about the the breastplate of righteousness once again Paul is very simply boys and girls just trying to direct attention to Jesus He's trying to make us think about Jesus, to consider him, just to look at him, take the attention away from ourselves, but to look at him and how great and wonderful he is. And whenever we do that, even just for a moment, we see someone who lived a perfect life without faults, never making mistakes, totally blameless, always, always doing what was right and good and pleasing to his heavenly father. Jesus lived the perfect life that you and I simply could not and will not and have not lived. But he lived that life for you and me. Jesus would go to the cross and he would, he would die. And the person who would ha go to the cross to die for the sins of the world had to be perfect. And Jesus was the only person that has lived on this earth that was perfect. And because he died, that was pleasing to God. And whenever we put our faith and trust in him, we, we have his good works placed on our behalf. I wonder if you've ever thought about it. Well how do you get to heaven? It's a really big question. But it's a really important question to think about. And we don't get to heaven. By all the good things that we do. You know. Being generous. Sharing. Thinking of other people. Being polite. They're all super super important things. And things that we should do. But they're not the reason that we get to heaven. But how we get to heaven. Is whenever we put our faith in and all the good things that Jesus has done for us. And that is that he lived a perfect life for us and died in our place. That's how we get to heaven. And that is so encouraging for us when we realise that. And that is the best day in our lives actually whenever we put our trust in Jesus. So if we trust Jesus we have his, the big word again, righteousness. I.e. his good life placed over our lives. So Paul is encouraging us very simply as I close to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Really to, to trust in, in the good and the perfect life that Jesus lived for us. And that will encourage us and that will free us and that will make us grateful and, and thankful. So out of that we don't ha you know have to earn our way to heaven but that we know Jesus has already done it. And because of that we'll want to live a good life and we'll live a life that points people to Jesus we'll live a life that will want to tell people about Jesus and what he has done for us so that is the the second piece of equipment the breastplate of righteousness and we'll look at the third piece of equipment that Paul talks about next week but just right now I want to pray as we're thinking about a lot of wonderful and great things and let's ask God to help us think about these things and be thankful for them Dear God, thank you that you're a good and a loving God. And thank you for what we have thought about today, just the breastplate of righteousness. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, and for what he has done. Thank you that he lived a good and perfect life and he lived it on our behalf. I pray that we would be thankful for that. We put our faith and trust in Jesus once again. And Lord, because of that, we want to live lives that reflect that and that we would live lives that would point people to you and that they would also put their trust in Jesus as well. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, it's now time for our challenge this week. But I wonder how you got on with the challenge last week. The colouring in your favourite movie character. Or maybe you got a DVD box or took a search on Google and you find something you, you coloured it in or you had a go at trying to draw it. I wonder how you got on. I'm sure you had lots of fun doing that. If you didn't get a chance to do it, well, there's still plenty of time to do that. I'm sure you'll have as much fun as I did uh, colouring in and drawing Baymax. So that's one for you to do. But this week, it is a different challenge and each week the challenges will, will vary. They're not going to be the same. And this week, it is a memory verse. And the memory verse that I'm going to challenge for you guys to memorize is found in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 and it's found in the passage that we've been looking at about the armour of God. So let me read it to you now, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 and this is what it says. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength 
of his life. It's a short enough verse, but it's a really important verse as we look at it. it encourages us to put our strength, find our strength and put our faith in God, not in ourselves. And that's really important that we would know that to be true, but actually do that as well. It's really good to memorize verses in the Bible, to store them up as well. It's really helpful and will be really good for you guys in the future. So there's a verse for you guys to try to memorize. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Well, that's us for this week. That is the end of the second episode of the Summer Club Online. Hope you've had lots of fun and maybe you're about to get your hands pretty dirty as you have a go at some finger painting so I hope that goes super well for you and I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again next week for our third episode.